if you are an Amazon seller, you either use fulfillment by Amazon or you actually receive orders through Amazon and fulfill them in other ways. So for example, if you use Trepstar to make and ship CD, DVD, USB products, your orders from Amazon Seller Central need to get into Trepstar somehow so we can send them to customers. This video is how to automate that process using Zapier. If you have a Zapier account and Amazon Seller Central is how you receive orders, this can help you. If you do fulfillment by Amazon, you can simply log into Trepstar, order 10 or however many units, and send them directly to Amazon. That's different. This is more about if you're receiving orders through Amazon and then we are fulfilling them one at a time. So if that's the case, you want to automate the order process. We've already written this uh, zap, so if you're starting out, you'd want to do make a zap, and we want to try to find, it's already here, but you could start typing in Amazon. We're going to go to Seller Central. When a new order is received, we want to continue. We've already logged into our seller account, but if you don't have one, there's going to be s some steps here to connect your Amazon seller account to Zapier. We'll show you that now. First it will show you a screen similar to this. You're going to want to click here uh, and this way you will kind of log into Amazon and give permission to Zapier. When we're all done we're going to end up coming back here and you're going to fill out some information here. When you've gone to Amazon and logged in you're going to visit manage your apps next. What we're going to do is authorize new developer. You may have other ones listed here from other integrations that you've done. Next you're going to want to type in this exactly in there. On the first screen they actually showed this to us. They said enter Zapier for the developer's name and this number for the developer ID. Whatever it is listed for you you're going to want to type it in here exactly maybe do cut and paste and then you'll want to click next it gives you a few more confirmations like reading the terms and then continue in this section you would see your company here we're just giving you this as an example you're gonna to want to copy the seller ID and the authorized token so use cut and paste to do this and you would copy meaning cut and paste these values into this field so these will be different for you but the main idea is that this whole step process was to get this information back to Zapier so it can connect to your Amazon orders so ultimately the you'll have this in your list when you've done that correctly and then we're gonna wanna continue when you've given Amazon your credentials it can log in and then we could customize the order. Amazon actually has a lot of statuses within a new order. We suggest you choose unshipped. That way we'll get the notification for the new order when you have an unshipped product. So we're going to continue here. And this step is going to find data from one of your previous Amazon orders. If you don't have any, it actually will just make some up. And we're just going to say it set a pulled order. We can actually look at some of the data down here. Um, we'll see that it is, I think it just says like John Doe. It's just a made up order. That's okay. So we're going to continue down and go to the do this step. When we click on that, it has a lot of choices here. We want to start typing in web hooks and sure enough we find web hooks by Zapier. That's the one we want. So when we get an Amazon order, we're going to call this web hook and we're going to do what's called a post. When we're done with that we continue and now we're going to type in the URL. This will remain as form and there's a lot of data elements. For example we can look here at that example order we can see all kinds of things like the buyer name, purchase date. We're going to be using all of these fields and assigning them over here to the field names that Trepstar will expect. We'll show you this here in a second. We're going to show you an example that's already been done here and filled out. If you need a new field, you just hit the plus button 
you can eliminate one, you can add one. To save time, we're showing you a filled out version of the webhook data. This is going to be typed in exactly. Our integration document has this printed out. So if you're looking at that as well as watching this video, you can copy and paste that information. Once again, the name is form, or the payload type is form. And what we want to do then is type, start typing in these field names. They're all listed here. These are all the ones that we're going to use. And this will then be submitted to Trepstar on that new order with all the data from the order, and that will automate the process. Trepstar requires certain fields to be sent to it, such as adder. It means it's short for address, and it's really the street address. In this example, type in ADDR, and then you're going to want to go into the data and find the customer. We're going to normally find shipping address line 1. We're going to delete all these just to start over, just to show you this example. Shipping address line 1. And then we'll add a little space there because we want to break it up and have a little bit of a space between the two so they're not combined. Shipping address line 2 will be in here, there. Sometimes there isn't one, but if there is, it would be like suite number, apartment number, unit number. We want to have a space in there just so it's not right at the end of this because then it won't make any sense. So we just have a little space in between. For every one of these fields, you're going to fill out either some hard-coded information or something from the data. In this case, this is your Trepstar login password, so change it to whatever your Trepstar password is. Zip is the shipping address postal code. Every shopping cart is a little different, but this one is just Amazon specific. This email is for the customer email. That way we can send them a tracking link. So that's part of the data. Data, That's buyer email. Quantity is going to be called the order items, order item quantity order. That's pretty long, but it has the item that they ordered and the quantity they ordered. If you had an order that had more than one items ordered, this would be in a list, but that's okay. We still call it product ID and quantity. Here is, type in whatever your Trepstar email, login email is. That way when we receive the data, we log you in and make sure you're ordering from your account. State refers to the state, as they say, or region. Mode, we want to set to test at first. But when you're all done testing this and you're ready to actually take orders, we'll change that to prod, which is short for production. So we're going to leave that as test for now. As we see further, we have name, which is the full shipping address name, city, country, invoice. This is interesting. We just want to have something unique within the order data for Amazon. They actually call it the order ID, but that will be used as the Trepstar invoice because that's unique. And we also want to type this in or copy and paste it from the document. Use Amazon here. That will tell you that this came in from your Amazon seller account directly. Some of these variables are default, just leave that as no, and this is yes. And what we're going to do then is continue, and when we're done, we've already tested one of these, but what we can do is retest. And When we do that, it's sending an example, and in this case it's saying failure. That's okay because we know why it has the incorrect email and password. We were just using, if we look at customized post, if we scroll down, we were just using, you know, that. You would actually, if you had your actual password and your actual login email to Trepstar, this would work better. And you would get more interesting responses. It would give you a summary of the order and so on. And then when you log into Trepstar when you're done, you'll see those orders in your recent orders list, and you can delete your test orders. And when you're ready, then you change it back to prod up here. When it's all working and you feel like it's working well, then you change the mode to P-R-O-D, which stands for production. 
and then any orders coming through that are marked unshipped by Amazon will be sent to Trapstar. Well, I hope this was helpful. I realize we haven't shown you a completed order, but if you have trouble doing this, just send us an email and we'll try to help you get it set up. Thank you.